My grandmother used to check eggs like this. She would observe which ones spun and which ones didn't. She had her reasons for doing so. She would take three eggs, holding one in each hand and placing the third between them. Any egg that spun, she would set aside in one container, and the ones that didn't spin, she would put in another. I'll reveal what that meant later on. Nowadays, hardly anyone does it this way anymore. I learned a different method from her. I know how to tell which eggs are fresh and which ones are old. If I have several cartons of eggs in the fridge, I can choose which ones to use for breakfast omelets. All I need is a glass of water for this. I put an egg in it and observe what happens. I prepared three glasses. I poured water into them. I'll show you how an egg might behave in water. When placed in water, an egg might sink to the bottom of the glass. Alternatively, it might float on the water's surface. In the third case, it might float halfway in the glass. What does this mean? Fresh eggs sink to the bottom. The freshest ones lie horizontally at the bottom. Eggs several days old float a bit higher. Eggs two to three weeks old float in the middle of the water. The oldest eggs won't sink. They float continuously on the surface. As for the trick with spinning eggs, my grandmother used it when a hen was sitting on the eggs. She would leave the eggs that spun for the hen to hatch. The ones that didn't spin, she would take home. Spread salt in front of the door of your house and place a doormat on it. The next day, you'll be rubbing your eyes in amazement. It turns out that salt has many positive uses that you can take advantage of at home. In this video, I'll show you the most interesting ones. Pour salt into a bowl. It has strong cleansing properties. Fill the bowl halfway with salt. Then take a garlic bulb, cut off its top. Its intense smell has repellent properties. Place it right in the center of the bowl. Take dried bay leaves, insert them evenly around the garlic. Do it carefully. Insert them one third of the way up. Place the prepared bowl next to the entrance door. It turns out that it has great power. Its practical effect is that it repels pests. Ants, spiders, and cockroaches will avoid the house with a wide berth. The intense smell of garlic and bay leaves acts as an irritant to them. Naturally protect your home from pests. However, it turns out that our grandmothers also believed in the purifying power of such bowls. They sprinkled salt in front of the house doors to protect it from evil forces and energy. The next day, they would sweep and throw it away. The second salt trick is also interesting. Take a lime and cut it in half. Then, cut off the tip so that it lies steadily. Put the fruit in a bowl and sprinkle it with salt. Place it under the bed and leave it overnight. It turns out that aromatherapy using lime effectively reduces stress. Just put it in the bedroom and go to sleep. The scent will make you calmer, facilitate falling asleep, and positively impact the quality of sleep. Don't throw away an empty ketchup bottle. It has a brilliant use in the kitchen that greatly facilitates cooking. Its shape and the materials it's made of have fantastic functions. Tossing it into the trash is a mistake. When the ketchup is finished, unscrew the cap and thoroughly wash its interior. Then, prepare a blender pitcher, peel a banana and break it into smaller pieces, then toss it into the blender. Add four tablespoons of flour. Prepare a small package of vanilla cream cheese. Finally, crack two eggs into the mixture. Blend everything into a smooth batter. Then, transfer it into the ketchup bottle. Finally, screw on the cap. The ketchup cap has a larger opening than other sauces. This is important because it's great for portioning small pancakes. Just squeeze the batter onto a heated pan. Without mess, you can make perfect mini pancakes. My kids love them. If you don't use all the batter, just close the bottle and put it in the fridge. The kitchen stays clean. Making pancakes using a ketchup bottle is pure pleasure. Take one onion and a jar lid. A friend from China taught me this trick. 
What you can do with them is amazing. You will definitely try this idea right away. Take large, beautiful onions, peel them if necessary, and cut off the stem ends. Clean them from the roots, but don't cut too much from that side. Place the prepared onion on the jar lid. Cut it in half. The lid will prevent you from cutting it all the way through. Now, cut it crosswise. Then, continue cutting it horizontally, as shown in the video. This way, you will cut it into many pieces. It will look a bit like a flower. Cut the remaining onions the same way. Do everything exactly like with the first onion. Take a large bowl. Pour water into it. Soak the cut onions in it. Leave them in the water for an hour and then dry them. In the bowl, beat two eggs. Mix them into a uniform mass. Add 100 milliliters of milk and mix again. In a separate container, prepare flour. Add salt, pepper, and sweet paprika. Mix them thoroughly with the flour. Now, take the first onion. It should be relatively dry by now. Dip it in the egg, be thorough, then dust the onion in the second bowl with flour. Again, do it thoroughly, so that the flour covers the entire onion. Heat oil in a pot. Put the onion in it. Fry it until golden brown. Turn it over to ensure it fries well on the other side, too. Place it on a plate. Serve with sour cream and tomato sauce. Just peel off individual onion feathers and savor their extraordinary flavor. This prepared onion makes an amazing snack or a standalone dish. Since my friend showed me this recipe, I make such onions regularly. It's delicious. Put the lemon into the boiling milk, just a few minutes, and something delicious will be created. Prepare 750 milliliters of milk. I used whole milk. It had over 3% fat. Pour the measured amount of milk into a pot. Take one lemon. Roll it for a moment. This kneading will make it easier to squeeze out the juice. The juice from one lemon is enough. Turn on the stove and start boiling the milk. Add one teaspoon of salt. Stir to prevent the milk from burning. When the milk starts to boil, pour in the lemon juice. Stir until it boils again, the milk will curdle. That's what we want. Remove from the stove and let it cool for several minutes. Place a sieve lined with cheesecloth over a container. Strain the cheese from the whey. Gently pour the curdled milk into the sieve. Cover the cheese with cheesecloth and press it with a heavy object. And it's ready. When the cheese drains, uncover it. Gently place it on a plate. You can also immediately prepare delicious sandwiches with it. All you need are pieces of breed, butter, freshly made cheese, and chivies. Enjoy your meal!